Welcome to Mormon Book Reviews, where an evangelical encounters the Restoration. I'm your host, Stephen Pinecker, and I'm very excited to have a special guest. But before we do that, I just want to remind everybody that our merch store is open. You go to mormonbookreviews.com and you're able to purchase hats and t-shirts and all sorts of cool items. That store is open. Um, also, uh, just real quick, by May 31st, if you want to get your entries in to win one of these two books, Moroni's America or Infinite Goodness by Jonathan Neville, uh, make sure you go to mormonbookreviews.com and put in the, uh, in the description book contest and then ask, uh, just let me, give me your full name and your address and tell me which entry you want to be put in for both or just one of the books. And I'll make sure that you are entered and make sure you U.S. residents only and you get your entry in by May 31st. Uh, I want to welcome onto my program uh, Paul DeBarth, who DeBarth, who is the lead archaeologist archeolo at the Joseph Smith Historic Sites in Nauvoo, Illinois, and he is affiliated with the Community of Christ. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you, Stephen. It's a pleasure to be here. So um, basically, uh, I asked uh, Paul if he would like to come on the program and to promote this uh, uh, annual thing that you've been doing for quite a while in which you uh, excavate archeological sites in historic Nauvoo that are owned by the community of Christ primarily, I'm assuming, and, um, and that you've been doing this for a very, very long time. Um, how long have you been doing this for? My first season on this project was 1971 with Robert T. Bray of the University of Missouri Archaeological Field School. And then I came back to be his crew chief in 75. And this was the site that we excavated that year. And it was a fascinating discovery because we were looking to see if there was actually a printing office on this site as historically advertised. And not only did we find one, we found two. That is probably the first and second times in Caesar's buildings. The first one described by Ebenezer Robinson and Don Carlos Smith as being in a basement of an old warehouse, which uh, uh, when we excavated it, we found type in the basement and so verified that particular claim. And then Don Carlos got sick and died and Ebenezer Robinson continued the operation, expanded the building, apparently closed off the basement and extended the building to the north. Let me uh, grab the camera and show you, because I think you'll find that, whoop, I've got, uh, do we have, do we have a picture, Stephen? Yeah, yeah, I can see it. All right, then let me step out of the way. You hopefully now can see the basement of the first times the season's building. And if I look right down here close, you'll see there's some big stones uh, right here on the corner and they line to the north and uh, yet the uh, part of that has fallen in. The part that's fallen in is from the first times of the season. So let me step over so you can see the rubble and see what we're dealing with. But the, uh, the two foundations you can see are parallel here. And the, uh, the, the foundation for the basement is collapsing and giving away. Nonetheless, we found type between the basement foundation and the outer one. And then we found type outside the outer one in the doorway, or actually showing a right-handed sweeper. So, so when you say type, the, you're talking about printer's type, is that correct? Printer's type, yes. Uh, they're small pieces that look a lot like square nails, but they're made out of lead. Or they look, they're basically out of uh, pewter. And so the, the metal detector doesn't necessarily pick them up. But uh, we did when in 1975, we did the excavation, we found 572 pieces of type. And many of them were scattered here along the front door area. Some were scattered over by the, uh, by the uh, west door. And then on the portion that was behind, and I mentioned there were also some that were down here in the basement, uh, where I actually worked and cleaned them out. We have a, a cavity here which shows okay, Paul, the entryway. Real yes. quick, I just I just lost the picture, um, so maybe adjust your camera real quick. All right, uh, if I can see anything. Hold on, get us back oh, to the gallery here. It's okay, folks. There we go. You're set. You're good. All right. Yeah, I'm on low power mode apparently. All right. Uh, so in, right here we have the entryway to the old uh, to the first building. And this was a staircase that then got closed by the stones that are immediately in front of you there. And uh, from the other side, you can see the vertical line. And let me show you the west wall here and the north wall over here. 
Um, and you can see on the on the on the far wall, there's a couple of big stones, one big granite stone in the corner, and a and a another uh, another major non limestone next to it for the second structure. For the first structure, you're seeing stone that is laid without mortar. And that is a characteristic of the pre-Mormon period. And so one of the evidences that I'm looking for this time is to see whether this basement actually is pre-Mormon. And I'm getting more and more ev evidence as we dig to demonstrate that it actually is. I don't so you, know yet whether it's of the, uh, of the Captain James White period in the 1820s or possibly even back to the 185 honore occupation. But in any case, uh, clearly if it's pre-Mormon, that helps to explain why they would close this this basement and build on top of it and uh, use the upper portion then for the, the second times and seasons. Okay, so this and, is this was the location for the second times and season and you're saying it was built over an existing site or was there was there a building there or they built over the foundation of it? The, there was there was another building here. The, the first building was the one that produced the the uh, basement. Okay. And and so the second building, well, let me go to the other side. You can see that line that's so decisive. Um, now, against, uh, uh, you can see a vertical line that uh, marks where the, the entry to the basement was. Mm -hmm. And that, that vertical line then is highly significant for us because the stones to the north of that were all, were all replaced. And the stones to the south of that have now uh, fallen in. And so we're picking that out and excavated to try to find the builder's trench. And hopefully the builder's trench will have artifacts in it to show us precisely or very close to when it was built. And in that case, we'll be able to determine which of the pre Mormon periods this uh, earliest building belongs in. So this could be in the early 1800s or in the 1820s, which, what, what are you leaning towards at this time? Well, let me add just another interesting little commentary for you. I'm standing here beside Water Street and Water Street is one of the few streets in Nauvoo that is not named after someone like uh, Parley or Sydney. Uh, most of the names are, are names of Mormons. But Water Street is not straight. And you can almost see the crookedness of it uh, headed up toward Captain, ja Captain James White's house uh, onto the west. And it, was, it began up there and continued down this way. And as it passed uh, Hiram's office in the sh and store, which is on the right in the trees, that that site uh, had his front door out in the middle of Water Street. And then we go down to the red brick store and Water Street is 66 feet wide. And if you go farther down to the mansion house, it's 66 feet wide. But then you go farther down to the highway and it's 42 feet wide. And so to, to see the change of width, let me move out here so you can actually see, look down Water Street and see it's, a, it's not straight, it's a crooked street. Hmm. And since Water Street is crooked, and it's named Water, and it's, it resides up here on the terrace overlooking the river, then I'm confident that we're looking at a pre-Mormon construction, and that means that helps to account for why the times and seasons, the, the initial one, uh, lines up not quite north and south, but is slightly skewed, and probably then to face Water Street, as it was uh, in the pre-Mormon period. The Mormons came then and, and added uh, Bain Street beside it. And Bain Street, of course, runs north and south. But, uh, you know, the interesting irony here is that, that we have this historical mix and to, to try to figure out which part of it uh, belongs to which period is a fascinating study. And I would like to invite people that are interested in this kind of thing to come dig with us. So you're talking about this Captain John Smith, I believe you said, or who was he and was that um, in was, when you when the 1805 date is that the first time that Europeans had settled in that area? Yes, uh, we we have uh, evidence of of well, Captain James White uh, came here and established his house out on the point at uh, probably 1823. At about that same time, we have two neighbors. One mile down the river, we have the uh, the Hibbard House. And the Hibbert House is occupied by the Orths today, and they've done a marvelous job of helping to maintain the historicity. And then another mile down the road is the Moffat House, and the Moffats have been there continually living in that house since 1823. Uh, 
uh, one of the very interesting comments in the interview of well, Dan Moffat was to discover that their answer, their tradition tells us that that their ancestor. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Look, the bird just came, landed right there on the site. Oh yeah, look there at we that. go. Yeah. We 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 have uh, uh, we have the Baltimore Oriole, Orioles nesting behind me here. Oh, cool. And so yeah, it is cool. Anyway, um, the the Moffats uh, say that uh, Joseph Smith gave permission for one of their ancestors to be to be baptized in the Nauvoo temple by the Catholic priest. Hmm. And then the Moffats are the ones that took care of uh, Julia Murdoch Smith when uh, she came back to Nauvoo with cancer and, and Emma died. And so she lived two more years in, and lived with the Moffats and they buried her in their Moffat family cemetery, the Catholic cemetery here east of town. Well, Paul, this is really fascinating stuff. And, and one of the reasons that you wanted to come on is that you wanted to promote um, the I Dig Nauvoo program that you do every year. And you had mentioned that you had volunteers for today, but unfortunately it was raining. And basically what you're looking at folks is the area this summer that they want to uh, basically excavate and then identify the dating of these buildings to see if they were uh, circa 1805 or 1820s, and that this was the second structure that housed the times and seasons. So there's a very good chance that if you were to volunteer, uh, you, you will definitely uncover Mormon history and some Mormon prehistory as well. Uh, Paul, um, maybe you could talk about what, um, what, what kind of, uh, what, what does it, somebody who wants to volunteer, what what kind of clothing and what what should they do to prepare if you've never done an excavation before what 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 would you what would you recommend that they do to prepare to do an excavation it doesn't take a whole lot of special preparation okay. we had uh, the higdens came from iowa for a couple of days this last week and uh, mrs higdon was wearing the the uh, paint co coveralls that she did her house and garden work in and that worked out just beautifully we have had Mormon elders wearing their shirt and tie come and dig with us. And so I'm not real particular about your dress, but I do appreciate that you come and uh, follow the directions because we are archeologists, not uh, pot hunters. And we therefore not only look uh, carefully to find out where, where the artifacts are from and how they associate with the, the remainder of the site, but also we ask for the artifacts to be washed and labeled before you leave the site. So we want you to put in enough time to be able to, to find the artifacts and then process them so you understand that every number on that artifact helps to make it so that when you pick up the artifact, you, you see what site it came from, what square it came from, what level it came from, and that way the artifact is secure in terms of the archaeological repository. And so basically somebody shows up now, just so I know, this is like a month-long thing that you do every spring, summer, I guess basically spring, um, in which you uh, have people come do, the, is this a Monday through Friday or a, Monday, a six day a week thing? I mean, so if you wanted to volunteer on a Monday, could you come or is it just on the weekends? Explain how this all works. Okay, typically we are open from Monday through Friday uh, from about 8.30 in the morning until five o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. I'm here on Saturday this time because we had a special group request that got rained out this morning. <laughs> and so, Unfortunately, they didn't get to dig, and that was a bunch of kids. And when you have kids with parental supervision, then that's a tremendous opportunity for them to gain some education because a kid that discovers an artifact develops a, a lasting interest in history, and it becomes a tremendous educational opportunity for them. Uh, we, because we have uh, been working as volunteers and are encouraging all kinds of volunteers to participate, we get all kinds of volunteers. Matter of fact, in the season that we were working on the the Battle of Nauvoo, we had uh, people uh, working with us whose ancestors had been on opposite sides of that fight. And fortunately, we are still successful at having people communicate amicably and no gunfire, no, no fights have broken out yet. <laughs> That's good to hear. Um, boy, it sure looks beautiful there, Paul. Um, it, it also, I've been told that it's appropriate that Nauvoo is called the beautiful place. Well, Steve, I hope you're coming to check that out because uh, there's no better way to know that than to actually be here. Uh-oh. That's okay. 
Oh, so uh, this is really fascinating. Of course, we're going to have a little technical tips. Uh, uh, try to get your camera on. I'll just talk while we're doing this. So again, the website is um, I dig Navu, and I'm going to leave a link in the description uh, to provide for people who would like to uh, volunteer. Uh, this is the really cool thing is that you have um, you have this situation where if you like, for instance, maybe you were planning on going on vacation to Navu this summer, um, that you would be able to maybe spend an afternoon as a volunteer to uh, excavate um, in Nauvoo. Uh, Paul, what is the uh, dates that are, so right now it's ongoing, it's currently happening. Uh, yeah. When, uh, what, we're, we're, at, at we're scheduled time? this year, for, oh, excuse me, we're, we're scheduled this year for May 17 to June 17. Um, and I'm going to plan to come back. I've got to take my wife to home for a doctor next Friday. And so we'll be missing Friday and I expect to be back uh, and open again on Monday, okay. uh, Memorial Day. Okay, so uh, are you able to get your video screen back on, Paul, or are you still in trouble? No, I, my, my battery's dying, Steve, okay. so I'm sorry, I'm about to have to shut off. That's okay. So basically, folks, uh, I just want to thank you. Uh, it looks like I will be flying out to, after I do Mormon History Association, uh, that next week I'm going to fly from Salt Lake City to uh, to Nauvoo, and there's a chance that we might be doing a meet and greet that week tentatively scheduled for June, Wednesday, June 8th. So if anybody wants to meet with me and Rick Bennett from Gospel Tangents and Jeff McCullough from Hello Saints podcast, all three of us will be there. Paul, were there any final words that you wanted to share with the audience? I would be delighted to have you come and share with us. We are uh, multidisciplinary, multicultural, and the fact that uh, we try to use the resources of the people that to volunteer means that you can make a significant contribution, whatever your professional background. So, it's especially a good opportunity for grandparents to bring their kids, uh, grandkids, and, and give them a chance to get a, a real a real live touch of history. Well, Paul, I want to thank you so much for coming onto the program today. Thank you, Steve, and appreciate uh, all of the attention that you're bringing to us and uh, to beautiful Nauvoo. So don't forget, I dig Navu. I'm going to leave a link in the description. I just want to remind my audience to don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification button for when a new episode comes out. I also want to remind you that we're on all the podcast formats. For those of you who would like to financially support our channel, you can support us as a Patreon or as uh, on P PayPal. And I do want to thank all those who are supporting my channel. Hey, folks, thanks for the patience with the technical difficulties. I really appreciate uh, that we're able to do this and kind of give you a uh, uh, a little taste of what you could expect to experience when you visit Nauvoo this summer. And you all have yourself a great day.